Okay, well, welcome. Hello. Hope everybody is well, wherever you are joining us, joining us from in, in the UK or the rest of the world. Um, delighted to have you here for this uh, online undergraduate parent, carer and supporter session. So thank you very much for your interest uh, in the University of Glasgow. And my name is Jonathan. I am your host for today. And before I introduce you to the rest of the panel, uh, just a few things to let you know about. So uh, this this event is here to help primarily parents, carers, supporters. So your your son or daughter uh, has already applied to Glasgow, uh, or thinking about applying to Glasgow, or may already have an offer for Glasgow. So hopefully, what we talk about over the next hour will help you understand a little bit more about the city, the university, and specifically uh, with my colleagues here today, we'll be talking uh, about um, student support. Um, what information we can share with you around careers, employability and opportunity uh, whilst your, your child is here studying with us for three, four, five years. International student support specifically uh, and also safety and safeguarding. So uh, so we will be um, talking a little bit about each of those. There'll be a little break after each for any questions. So if you look on your screen, you'll see a Q&A tab please feel free to um, pop your questions into that. Uh, we have colleagues in the background who may uh, re write a response to your question. Uh, and uh, likewise, um, if there's questions there for the panel, I will take it to, to the relevant members and um, see what they have to, to say to answer your question. So hopefully that all sounds uh, okay and you get out what, what you need out of the events. Um, this has been recorded, so if uh, you can't stay around for all of it or you want to share it with others afterwards um, watch the the university's social media channels and we'll share a link uh, later on hopefully today but very soon uh, so that you can actually re-watch and or, sh or share accordingly so without further ado we'll get started So I've already introduced myself. Uh, I'll let the rest of the panel uh, introduce themselves. So over to Leslie first. Thanks, Jonathan. Hi, everybody. I'm Leslie Taylor. I'm Head of Employer Engagement based within Careers, Employability and Opportunity. Um, I've been at the university for about 14 years. So an awful lot of experience within um, career services and obviously the employer engagement side of things. Pass over to Daniel. Thanks, Leslie, and morning, everyone. My name is Daniel Mitchell, and I'm the Academic Partnerships Manager within our Careers, Employability and Opportunity team. I've worked in uh, careers or, or the career sector for around 10 years, and I lead our team focused on embedding employability within the curriculum. Uh, and I'll hand over to Lisa. Lisa, you're muted. Oh, I pressed it twice, sorry. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Lisa Milne. I'm an international student advisor here at the University of Glasgow. I've been an international student advisor with Glasgow for around 15 years now. And prior to that, I was the recruitment officer for um, the East Asia region. So I've been a big part of the whole student journey. And hopefully I'll be able to answer all your questions today, either through my slides or we'll have some time for questions after. Last but not least, over to you, Gary. Thank you, Jonathan. Good morning, everyone. My name is Gary Stephen. I'm the Head of Security for the University of Glasgow, and I've been with the university for nearly eight years. In a previous life, I was in the military and law enforcement and worked for the government. Uh, and I'm responsible for the security team here that are here 24-7, 365 days a year to keep your uh, keep your staff and students safe and well. Thank you very much. So... Uh, hopefully we'll be able to answer your questions, uh, but I'm going to do a little bit now just to tell you a little bit more about the, the city, the university and student support, and then we'll pause for any questions before we uh, go on to careers. So welcome to Glasgow. It is actually a, a very nice spring day here. Not that you uh, would, would know that, but um, yep. Yeah, uh, we are one of the UK's largest cities, and uh, you'll see backdrops and screenshots of bits of the city behind each of us, uh, obviously focusing on, on the university. So that's the main building and part of the university campus you can see behind some of us. Um, we are 
the third largest student city in the UK. So we have a, a very diverse student population, uh, which does make us a very lively place to be, uh, but also a very friendly place to be. Uh, alongside being a sporty city, we have lots of big international sporting events on regularly. We're very creative. We are the media hub uh, for the, uh, Scotland. Uh, we are also very green, as you can possibly see from the shots, um, and both the university and the city have a commitment to be uh, net zero by 2030. Uh, it's a very diverse um, population in the city and across the student community, and we're also a fun place to be. So um, it's a really good uh, choice for, for your child to, to come along and spend uh, their undergraduate uh, experience here. They'll get an amazing time, both academically and outside of the lecture theatre. So uh, we'll try and give you a little bit of a flavour for that, but there's lots of other sessions on during the day today. So please um, uh, explore those and ask questions. It's your opportunity if you haven't had a chance to get along to campus yet, or you're not going to be able to, just to really engage with staff and, and find out a little bit more about the experience that your son or daughter will have when they get to you. Um, Glasgow is not a massive city. It's about sort of 700,000 people, um, and it's very easy to get around. Uh, we have an international airport about 15 minutes away from the university campus, so pretty easy for flight connections, whether that's from within the UK or further afield, uh, and increasingly cycle-friendly. And uh, as I've mentioned, uh, we're a pretty welcoming bunch. Um, Scots are renowned for being a, a friendly a friendly crowd, so um, you will, you'll experience that uh, if and when you manage to get here. A little bit about the university. <clears throat> we have been around for quite a while. Uh, we are the uh, fourth um, oldest English speaking university in the world, established in 1451, uh, but equally with a, an exciting and dynamic present and future. So lots of things going on uh, that are impacting on the world and helping to make a difference while still giving a, a fantastic student experience for those that are here. Uh, studying and we are in the world top 100 uh, for uh, overall university standing and you'll see quite high up in the world for specifically sustainability and uh, impact rankings THE standing for times higher education so that's one of the main uh, ranking organizations uh, that provide stats on, on universities worldwide. We're also a member of the Russell Group, uh, which for those that don't know, it's the top 24 research intensive universities in the UK. And you may be wondering why that's relevant to your son daughter if they're coming to study an undergraduate degree. But many of those researchers who are at the cutting edge of research um, domestically and internationally uh, are also the, the academics who will be teaching your child. So uh, access to some of the best quality learning and teaching that you will get in the UK uh, <clears throat> and um, one of the top universities in the UK also. We have uh, various uh, Nobel laureates in our history, uh, most recently, a recent one just a couple of years ago, so it's not all um, stretching back to several hundred years ago, it's very much current, uh, and right now we have around 35,000 full-time students uh, on campus, well campuses, we have our main Glasgow campus which you see in the backdrops, um, but we also have a campus on the other side of, uh, of Glasgow and Southwest Scotland in Dumfries. So, uh, and we have students here from over 140 countries. So as I mentioned, it's a very diverse and dynamic student population. In terms of the experience that your child will get, I've mentioned it already, but your child will be taught by dedicated and passionate academics uh, in a flexible and innovative learning department. We've, yes, we have historical buildings, but we also have very modern cutting edge ones also. So it's a blend and your student will be uh, moving around between their subject areas uh, and experiencing a, a wide range of different types of facilities to give them the best academic experience. And there are lots of other things for them to see and do as well. So um, we have about 12,000 new students join every year, about half of those are undergraduates, and we have about 10,000 staff, both academic and service staff, to, to make sure that um, they get the best service and support that, they, that we can offer. Specifically on employability, obviously that's a, a prime reason for coming to university to um, prepare your child for their chosen career or to, to advance and the next steps towards employment. And we are ranked in the top 20 uh, in the UK for graduate employability. And part of the extra co-curricular experience is enabled by over 300 student clubs and societies. So everything you could possibly imagine, a students are up to outside of, of class. And if there's a club, society, interest, hobby, whatever it may be that your child has, 
that we don't have a club for, then we support them to start up a new one. So um, lots of diverse interests and lots of things that they can do. And we also have the opportunity, I know you, you'll be coming, potentially coming from abroad if you're outside of the UK, but there's lots of other study abroad opportunities as well. So uh, and we'll, uh, there's information on that during the, the, the day later as well. So we'll, we'll let you know what time that is on. So if you're interested in the study abroad opportunity, you're, which could be a semester, a short term study opportunity for a month or over the summer or a full academic year uh, during the undergraduate degree, then that is also possible. We've mentioned that it's required a diverse student population. So we have students here of all ages, ethnicities, identities, orientations, beliefs, and abilities, and they're all equally welcome. Uh, and we celebrate that diversity as much as we can. Uh, and that's been recognized by our University of Sanctuary status, which recognizes our safe and welcoming environment. Uh, and it is a very diverse, engaged, and, and fun community to be part of. And, and moving on to, to student support, just a, a small sample to, to illustrate some of the things that we that we offer. Uh, this is just a, a taster. There are lots of other opportunities for uh, support, uh, encouragement, uh, and whether that's um, sort of low level intermediate needs or, or more um, uh, things that need to be escalated for more specific types of support and intervention, then we can cover all of those off. Uh, but specifically, we have a student engagement team. Uh, so if your child has any inquiries or um, administrative needs uh, whilst they are here at the university, we have a dedicated team for that. We employ students to help students because they're the ones that are also living the, the student experience. So uh, it's really helpful for peers uh, to reach out and help other students, particularly when they're new and just arriving. We have support teams in our halls of residence, and we also have dedicated international support team, as, as Lisa said, and she is a member of that team, and we'll be telling you a little bit more about that shortly. There's also support embedded in the academic schools, the subject areas where your child will be um, being taught, and we have a wide range of wellbeing and inclusion related teams, including disability, counselling, safeguarding, and faith support. And last but not least, um, the area that Daniel and Leslie are, are, are working in, careers, employability and opportunity. L large range of careers advice right from the get go. Uh, we do encourage students uh, to engage with careers as early as possible and not leave it to the last year. Um, so lots of opportunities, um, events, workshops, skill development, and obviously also um, jobs, both on campus and off campus in lots of internship um, opportunities mentioned study abroad, likewise volunteering and entrepreneurial support. So hopefully we, we cover everything that your child could need or want. And just a short, uh, uh, I guess, overview of how we provide that support. So there's lots of um, engagement where just in terms of the day to day, if uh, those needs are <coughs> accelerated or more um, intense, then there's, there's different levels of response that we provide all the way up to crisis response, which hopefully is never needed. Uh, it is occasionally, however, so we do have um, a lot of capacity and capability to provide that, that support if when that is needed. And that's something that Gary will touch on um, later on during the presentation. So I will pause there. Uh, that's just a snapshot. There is a, um, a web address on the screen and there'll be something similar after each of the sections. So uh, feel free to take a, a screenshot or a photo of that and you can always go and check that out later. Uh, and this will uh, tell you a little bit more about um, the experience that we're offering, the work we're doing to improve the student experience, but also link off to information about learning and teaching and, and various other aspects of university life. So. Are there any questions so far? You're all being very quiet, uh, so don't be shy. Please uh, post any questions in the Q&A and we will do our best to answer them. Actually, as a segue into careers, a uh, question here around um, how many part-time jobs are available on uh, campus or close to campus for undergraduates. So would you mind, uh, Leslie, answering that one for us? Uh, that's, that's a bit of a tricky question. We don't know them all. <laughs> I would say 
given where we are in the West End, there is a plethora of bars, restaurants, cafes, businesses. Um, we're very closely linked to the city centre as well. So there's an awful lot of businesses in there that do part-time recruitment with us. Um, as a bit of a snapshot for the part-time jobs that we've that we've managed, specifically part-time, both on and off campus, you're looking at about 200 in the last year. Um, the on-campus ones are very attractive to students. They, they know the campus, they're familiar with campus, they're coming here anyway. We pay very well um, and the conditions um, are, are great. So um, the on-campus ones in particular are very popular, but we work really closely with the local businesses here. Um, and our aim going forward is to, to increase the number of opportunities that, that we will have for students. So um, I'll be touching on that as I kind of go through my slides. Thank you very much, Leslie. That's great. Um, another question that's come in here is, is one of the biggest concerns around universities is about how to catch depressed students who become at risk uh, because it's a big deal being away from home. Uh, so uh, generally, I can comment there and maybe I'll come to, to, to Lisa if that's OK afterwards, just for anything that we do specifically for international students, because we do recognise it's not just international students who experience that, that homesickness and maybe feeling a little bit isolated from family and friends. It's a different culture, it's a different city. So we do a lot of work at the start of the academic journey to help students familiarise themselves with both the university and the city. Uh, not just in theory, uh, we take them out and about and there's lots of tools uh, that are arranged during the sort of welcome week in that first semester of the, of the academic year. Uh, but as I mentioned, uh, there are peers, so students who are trained and are available across all of the subject areas of the university. Uh, and there are also student support officers who are members of staff who are embedded in all the academic schools. And they are some of the first points of contact if your child is struggling to reach out to, um, and they will then direct them to the most relevant staff members for specific types of support. Uh, and there are lots of lots of different um, specialist teams across the university who are, who are here to help. And um, I've seen some of that in action over the last 12 years that I've been at the university and staff are amazing at reaching out and supporting uh, students. They're very experienced at that. We are familiar with some of the challenges that students will face and we work collectively to, to do the best we can to support your child when you're here, whether that's from uh, just feeling a little bit lonely and struggling to make friends, which can sometimes be a challenge, uh, all the way through to some more acute uh, medical needs. Uh, so wide range of support there. So. Um, Lisa, is there anything extra you wanted to add? Thanks, Jonathan. Yes, we actually offer a, ded a dedicated international student uh, welcome and orientation programme, which I'll talk about in my following slides. Um, we work really closely with the student support officers, as you mentioned, and also the Res Life team, who are actually within the accommodations, um, the student accommodations, and we all support each other to support our students, all with varying needs. Uh, we offer lots of information sessions, not just in the first few weeks at international student orientation, but throughout the academic year, working with our counselling services, our student support officers, and also uh, the local community to ensure that we're offering wellbeing classes, wellbeing walks. We do um, lots of events with the sports teams and the different societies um, and organisations as well. Um, we personally, at International Student Support Team, we have an appointment booking system so students can actually meet with us one to one. Usually students don't have to wait more than a week and we are responsive to emails around 40 hour response time. Thank you very much. And that's partly answered to another question that's come in in terms of any social events prior to university beginning. So um, they depends when your when your child arrives um, and there are usually um, week zero in the timetable is sort of traditionally that welcome week um, but prior to that there are online forums and communities that, that new students can join to chat to other new students who are also joining and may be sharing some of those common concerns and um, so that should be in the email communications that your child is receiving just pointing them to those online forums so they can connect and just 
understand that lots of people are in the same situation and feeling the same way. Uh, and that can be really helpful uh, sometimes just to, to make those connections. So at least then yeah, you could always arrange to meet up when you do get to campus and you've got someone who you've you've built a bit of a connection with in advance. Um, and uh, there's also a, the Unibody scheme um, on the university website. So uh, you'll see that on various pages where you can actually reach out and talk to a current University of Glasgow student. Um, so um, that's quite helpful also. Got a few other questions coming in. So if a student does not enjoy their course for whatever reason, how does the university help with switching courses? So there is quite a lot of flexibility in the Scottish university system. So something to bear in mind if you're also sitting with offers from uh, English universities, Scottish universities do tend to be more flexible. Um, so alongside their chosen um, degree subject, they will sub, uh, also study, have to study one or two other subjects, depends if they've applied for a single or a joint honours degree. Um, <clears throat> so they will get to, to choose other subjects. And if they carry that on during the first two years, they can actually move their degree choice to one of those other subjects that they've studied in the first part of their four year degree. So quite a lot of options there. Uh, and how many international students are there per year group? That varies a lot. <laughs> uh, so if we look at, uh, I guess, overall international student population of the university, it's over it's over 10,000. So um, there's, there's a big portion of students who are coming from uh, those 140 countries that we mentioned. So I will pause the Q&A for now and I will move on and uh, I will take a slug of tea while uh, Leslie and Daniel tell you a little bit more about uh, careers, employability and transformation and opportunity, sorry. Thanks very much, Jonathan. Yep, hi everybody. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I'm Leslie Taylor. I head up the employer engagement team within careers, employability and opportunity. Um, Firstly, I don't think there's probably going to be a better time to to, to come to the university and, and get any support from, from this particular department. We've had a huge amount of investment over the last 12 to 18 months. Um, so we've now got a student professional development team, which has um, got more resource than, than, than before. Uh, my team's been more heavily resourced, particularly within student opportunities and that part-time work and internship um, jobs piece. Um, so, yeah, I think fantastic time to, to become to the university. Um, just firstly, what, what do we do as a department? So our aim is to kind of inspire students to uh, inspire and empower students and graduates to achieve their full personal and professional potential. Uh, and we do that in, in a number of ways. And like I've mentioned, we've got the student professional development team. Essentially, they're the careers managers. That's who students will go to see for one to one guidance and advice. These are bookable appointments. They're online and in person. They will get support around their career choices and have discussions and uh, support around job searching. Also with the whole kind of application process and supporting students through that. Um, all students coming to the university here are pre-registered onto our service system, which is known as Glasgow Careers. They all get a profile on there and it means they can go on with their single sign on from the get go and they can register for appointments to see our, our careers managers. They can sign up for our events that we run. They'll also have access to thousands of vacancies. We've got a feed that comes from target jobs and um, employs directly into the system. So that's graduate roles. Uh, internships, part-time work, volunteering, there is this juggernaut of a system with vacancies in there that they will be able to have access from day one. Um, <clears throat> moving on to, to my team, our engagement team, our aim is to give students um, um, exposure to as many companies, as many diverse companies and as many opportunities as possible. And we do that in a number of ways. We've got a series of careers fairs, um, but, but bring employers mainly physically on campus now. That seems to be, you know, uh, the, the number one way that students want, want to meet employers. So over the course of the two semesters, students will have the opportunity to come to, I'll just go through them, our, our flagship event, which is the Careers and Internship Marketplace. So that's graduate roles, that's internships, volunteering and part-time work. Um, it will attract about 
50 to 60 employers and we'll have about 2,000 students come along to that one. We do some sector specific fairs as well, working directly with schools and colleges. So we've got the law fair, we've got a STEM fair, we do a go abroad fair, we do some um, spotlight on weeks, so Green Careers Week, Creative Careers Week, uh, Explore a Career in Teaching, and new for this year, we are going to be launching a part-time jobs fair, which will be taking place um, at the start of, uh, well, in semester one. Alongside the careers fairs, we also have um, a, a, a plethora of ways for employers to come on campus and engage with our students. So they can have pop-up areas in high footfall spots on campus. They can do skill sessions, presentations, you, you name it, they can come on campus. A big double-decker branded bus to come and engage with students and talk to them about their opportunities. We've got lots of different ways for employers to come and, and, and meet our students. <clears throat> we like to bring alumni back. Students love this, alumni love this coming back on campus and they share their experiences of, you know, what they've gone on to do and, you know, how they found if you're a junior in your career, how you found that transition into the workplace. We work very closely with a lot of the businesses around and, and, and more wider from, from, from the university. Um, in particular, we've got a series with the uh, cabinet office so uh, they come on and bring high profile speakers to, to give talks to us and students get opportunities to network with members from the cabinet office we do a civil service careers fair as well which will be running again um, this semester in terms of part-time work and internships that's another area my, my team manage um, we have exclusive internships for our students both on and off campus they're currently run through the internship hub it's hugely popular um with both employers and students thank you jonathan for moving the slides on um and we also run part-time work as well at the moment we've got the internship hub and the student job hub but we're going to go through a bit of a rebrand so you guys are getting a little bit of a sneak peek at the branding that's going to be coming through this is all going to be housed under the student opportunities hub so it's bringing together our internships that, that we vet and we source and the part-time jobs that we vet and we source now these are both on campus and off campus students will not be able to miss this when they start particularly in, the, in Freshers' Week. So we're, we're going to be a sponsor of the Freshers' Fair. We are going to be running campaigns with staff. We want them to think student first. If they've got a job coming that a student could do, whether it be an internship or part-time work, we want that to be designed for a student and to come through us so we can promote it all out to students. So this is essentially a one-stop shop for students. They one place to go where they can find part-time work and internships that we have managed. We work really closely with the student unions here and the SRC, so everybody should know where to come uh, to, to get a job. Um, kind of examples of jobs that you might have on and around campus. So U of G Sport, we work really closely with them. They've got leisure attendant jobs that are around about minimum two hours a week. We've got uh, jobs within some of the colleges. For example, we've got a receptionist in the College of MVLS at the moment for 14 hours a week. Information services over in the library. We've got outreach ambassador posts at the moment, 16 and a half hours a week. So we've got lots and lots of jobs coming through. Um, and you'll be able to follow a lot of this if you go and look on our LinkedIn um, uh, profile on LinkedIn for careers, employability and opportunity. We put it all on there. We also put it on our other channels, uh, Instagram and TikTok, but you're probably not, not so much interested in those ones. Um, and talking of comms, we sent a newsletter out to every student once a week, covering off all the opportunities that we've got, both from careers fairs, employers on campus, vacancies, part-time work. So every student will receive communications um, from the team on that. Now I'll pass over to Daniel to pick up on the kind of academic side of things with employers. Thanks so much, Leslie. Great overview in, into some of the work that, that we do there. So yeah, as I introduced um, earlier, my name is Daniel. Um, and yeah, my team works in partnership with academic colleagues, um, really focusing on embedding employability and career development, but within the curriculum. So a lot of work you've just heard, I guess, is, is the central things that we do. Um, but the work that my team focuses on is, is kind of in that partnership with, with academics um, within the degree program itself. So we actually have a dedicated careers and 
employability manager for each college. And really it's their role to ensure that we have kind of a, a consistent approach to embedding employability across the whole university. Um, but with our knowledge, kind of giving that consideration to the context of the range of different degree programs that we have. Um, each member of my team is an expert in interpreting careers related data, using labor market information. Um, and we use this knowledge really to build activities into the curriculum around career management skills, work related learning, work based learning, uh, and so much more. Um, and to bring this to life, I thought I would just give you some examples of, of how this happens across all of our colleges. So in Arts and Humanities, we run a secret jobs club. Um, this is where we actually challenge students' understanding of the job market by inviting what we would call mystery employers. So we don't reveal their identity in advance and the students actually have to try and guess um, who they are recruiting for. Um, and it's kind of to reflect that, you know, you and most importantly, the students might not expect, you know, these kind of recruiters to actually recruit arts and humanities students. So just challenging that narrative um, a little bit. In the College of Science and Engineering, we run a creativity week, um, and this is where students can design new approaches to important issues. Uh, and these are set by industrial partners, um, and these focus on you know, issues around transport, energy and sustainability and getting the students to actually use their knowledge, you know, to address um, some of these things and, and to come up with new ideas to how to resolve them. In the college that I work with really closely is social sciences. Um, our law students do what is called mooting, and this essentially simulates kind of a court environment, allowing students to participate in kind of mock legal proceedings. Um, and then finally, in medicine, veterinary and life sciences, um, we've put together a range of what we call careers labs. And this covers topics that include the real world application of techniques that students are learning in the labs. Um, students undertake a skills audit and they learn about and practice networking, both in person and, and using LinkedIn and, and so much more. Um, Obviously, these examples that I've given, you know, the importance is around aligning what's being learned on the degree programs within the curriculum to student skills and their future. Um, and we're really able to empower students to articulate the skills, but also the knowledge value of the degree that they're getting while they're with us at Glasgow. I'll finish with a statistic from our most recent graduate outcome survey. So this is a survey that all students studying in the UK are asked to complete around about 15 months after their graduation. Um, and it focuses on where their degree has taken them, whether that's employment, further study, self-employment and, and so on. And this shows that almost 95 percent of our undergraduate students are in work or further study um, within this 15 month period. So I'll finish up there. Uh, and I think Leslie and I are happy to take any questions. Fantastic. Thank you both. That's super. Hopefully uh, there's, the audience are, are not left with any uh, misunderstanding about the sheer range of support and opportunities that, that careers, employability and opportunity provide. So there have been a couple of questions that have been coming in whilst you've been talking. So, uh, And if you do have anything specific uh, you would like to know, please just post it in the Q&A chat. But right now uh, there's a question in terms of how long can uh, a student stay to find a job after graduating? That might be something that you answer in conjunction with, with, with Lisa as well. So, yeah, so if it's the, the graduate, I mean, Lisa will be able to go into this in much more detail, but if it's the graduate visa, it's two years, um, and then you would switch to the skilled worker visa. I'll let Lisa go into a bit more detail on that. Yes, <clears throat> thanks, Leslie. We, um, we support students with the graduate visa application form. So that's the visa. Um, things can change. Remember, we've got you know a few years before um this cohort will be graduating, but at the moment, um, students that successfully pass the course for which their offer was made or the title on the CAS, um, can then um once they've successfully completed, they then apply for what's called the graduate visa, and it means that once that's granted, students can either stay and work in the UK, but also this visa. It's like having a no pressure visa. You don't have to have a job. You can be looking and you can be seeking for an employment. And actually, you don't even have to have work for the two years you're here. You can you can be looking for employment and be in the UK. And as Leslie said, you can actually apply for the skilled work, working visa also. And you can do that straight from university or you can do it after the graduate route. And this is where a company employer sponsors um, the applicant to be in the UK so the issue sponsor sponsorship, whereas the graduate route, no sponsorship is required. 
I was Thank just going to. Oh, sorry, sorry, Jonathan. I was just going to come in and say, obviously, that covers the international students. But I think it's probably worth saying that we do offer, you know, graduate access to our career services as well. So again, that is the, a two-year period, um, and that enables students to, you know, continue to attend um, events. Some of which, obviously, will be online if they're not still in Glasgow. Come onto campus and, and attend some of the fairs, but also access to our jobs board, you know, booking appointments with our careers advisors and, and things like that. So there's still a range of, of support after students would, would finish their degree at Glasgow. And that's for all students. Yes. Great. Uh, question in terms of what uh, employers we work with. So is it possible to give a, a few examples, Leslie? Uh, yes. Lots. This is a memory <laughs> test now. Um, so uh, just off the top of my head, uh, Mercedes Formula One. We've done some events with them. Jaguar Land Rover. Um, obviously the big four, KPMG, EY. Um, we've got organizations that have got massive offices in our city center so jp morgan have just opened a new brand new office um barclays have got a huge big office here as well in glasgow um so you mentioned jonathan the media hub we've got bbc right on our doorstep here we do some work with them we also work with a lot of smes so some organizations that students may not have heard of but we do a lot of work with them to raise their profile on campus and get them to take interns um and use them to advocate for the SME when they come back on campus but how great their experience was it's a whole raft of organizations we work with from all sizes from all industries and I guess that's the point we want students to be able to come find out about these industries hear about these careers um, and, and sample them um, as far as possible absolutely and that includes third sector charity public sector as well doesn't it Absolutely, absolutely. We're just in the process. We've just closed um, a program called Find a Solution, where the university funded uh, 27 paid, fully paid um, internships with local um, social enterprises, charities, um, to for students to come in over the summer and and, and work part time on a, on a project that will, that will strategically help those those businesses. So yeah, we do an awful lot of work with charities and, and social enterprises. Uh, one last final question before we move on, conscious of time. Um, I'm not sure if, Dan, you can answer this one, but do you support law students in finding a traineeship after year four? Yeah, great question. So, yeah, I work with the College of Social Sciences, so that includes the School of Law. Um, and yes, you know, the, the School of Law actually do an amazing employability program that's open to students um, where they will cover lots of these different topics. Um, and certainly, you know, getting, finding this traineeship is, is definitely one of them. Um, they run, uh, and whether you're studying Scots law or common law, Again, that will be the case. Um, I know that they work really closely with the Law Society of Scotland, and I think they actually come in and run a kind of a get that trainee type, uh, traineeship type session. Um, and obviously, we work with you know lots of local and regional um, you know law companies and law organisations um, who will actually advertise their traineeships. So I've seen a couple come in recently that that we've actually you know been able to promote to law. Um, students um, and recently again we've invited Dixon Minto so they've got a, a, a an office based in Edinburgh um, to actually come in and to talk to the students they brought some kind of uh, recent alumni with them and the whole idea was to you know help the students understand about their organization but also to talk to them about the practicalities of actually getting a traineeship um, and what it's like you know to experience working in, in a kind of a legal firm. That's great thank you very much uh, I'm, I'm conscious we've mentioned colleges quite often so you probably know, but I'll just uh, reiterate that we've got four colleges that make up the university. So students will uh, belong for, to at least one of those, possibly two if they're doing a joint degree. Uh, but they are Medical Veterinary Life Science College, College of Social Sciences, College of Arts and Humanities, and the College of Science and Engineering. So just in case you were wondering what, what the colleges were. But I will um, now hand over to Lisa for... her section. There we go, International Student Support. Yeah. Hi again, everybody. Um, yep, we have a fantastic International Student Support team here at the University of Glasgow. Melanie and David are on the advising team with me, and we'll be joined by a fourth advisor in June, which is great to hear. As Leslie said, lots of investments. In Lisa, you've mu muted. Did that <laughs> Sorry about that. So yeah, um, so the ISS team I made up myself. Uh, Melanie and David are on the advising team, supported by Emma, 
who is our Student Life and Engagement Officer, supporting the team uh, with other events and social media interaction and taking care of all the administration. So next slide. What do the International Student Support Team do? Or as I like to say, what do we not do? <laughs> Our team hosts the International Student Welcome and Orientation Programme in January and in September. This is a schedule of events to ease the transition to living and studying in Glasgow. We offer information sessions that provide uh, details on safety, well-being, culture shock, transport around Glasgow and Scotland and further the UK, homesickness, visa advice for um, travelling around Europe, but we also offer fun and friendly events such as um, Scottish cooking events, Gaelic language taster sessions, walking tours, walking in Scotland, um, trips around Scotland to get to know the culture and um, and hopefully their home for the next four years. Um, it's our privilege to welcome our international cohort and we believe that by offering a comprehensive welcome programme, the student settles um, and engages right away with um, the university, with their peers and with the staff. Um, and, and that would continue for the entire student journey. Our advisors are licensed to offer visa advice regarding study and work. We're not quite immigration lawyers, but we do support students to many um, different visa questions and we offer visa information sessions and we work really closely with um, different embassies and consulates around the world. Um, so throughout the academic year, we continue our information sessions um, about living life in the UK and of and working with services such as the NHS, which is healthcare um, is very different in this country than other countries. So we really like to ensure that our students um, straight away register with a, a doctor and a dentist. Um, and we also support our international families. So many students actually decide to bring their partners and children to Scotland with them. And we I don't think this is quite the correct audience for this, but just in case um, students stay on to do further study, you never know. Um, we offer lots of um, welcome orientation events for families as well, and we support students throughout the journey. So the, oh, and if uh, we encourage all our students, I think we just moved on a bit quickly there with the, Yep, so at the bottom here, you'll see, we really encourage students to engage with their social media, but we also, like Leslie, we send out um, international student message via email, and that's twice a month. And this will have information about events and fun things and information sessions and different, um, different things going on in the community. But actually our international student message will also have updates, really important ones about immigration changes and um, upcoming changes to any visa fees and things like that that can happen quite regularly so we, if you could really encourage students to be checking these international student messages throughout their time at the university okay so yep this chart is just to highlight how the international student support team um, are involved throughout the entire student journey from pre-departure events with recruitment and marketing teams a little bit like this one um right through to graduation and then supporting students through the visa process as we discussed applying for the graduate route um, what if I want to stay on and do a master's how do I then extend my visa what about accommodation um, you know I want to work in the UK I want to go and work in Europe so we can help you know really support students from day one um, we are welfare advisors as well so we can work with schools and colleges as Jonathan said we have contacts throughout the university and um, um, I work really closely with the security team in Gary with the counselling um, and psychological service and the student support officers so we are a one-stop shop for ensuring that um, every student gets the correct support throughout their time here at the University of Glasgow I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you very much, Lisa. And it's just to reiterate that um, if you're not an international parent, uh, so from outside of the the UK, so and your your child is is somewhere in the UK, a lot of this is all replicated, so it's all there for all students. It's just that there's some specific support for international students because obviously you're coming from further afield. Um, so, uh, any questions for Lisa? Yeah. 
Lisa, you've touched on this a little bit, could, but could you expand a little bit more on um, on how we help stu uh, new students to, to settle into the city? Sure, no problem. So if um, our web pages have just been updated this week and the first thing that we offer is a meet and greet service at Glasgow International College, at uh, Glasgow International Airport. It's not a transport service, okay? So we used to offer many years ago. Unfortunately, our student numbers, as you can imagine, um, have increased over the years and the airport um, cannot have lots of different staff for safety reasons. So what we've compromised on is our welcome team. They'll be dressed in yellow t-shirts. We'll be at the airport on certain dates at certain times. And those dates are going to be published very soon on our welcome pages. Um, so I'll, I'll maybe, we can provide the links, Jonathan, for the international student support pages. Sure. So the meet and greet service will take place um, throughout September. I think we're starting on Friday the 13th. I don't know if that's ominous. And we will continue right through to the 27th. So teaching starts on the 23rd. We'll continue on another week. We'll have a welcome team in the Fraser building at the university main campus who are dedicated to ensuring that students are settled in. Where do I buy a mobile phone? Where do I get a duvet? Um, how do I make friends? And that's one of the biggest things that you know we really have to focus on, especially after the pandemic. I think there's a lot of social anxiety, a lot of worry about putting yourself out there. So our team hosts lots of really fun events and there's events for um, home students and international students um, alike. So yeah, our team are really involved. Thank you very much. And make, just to make sure that we don't shortchange Gary, we will move on uh, to security and, and safeguarding. So, so over to you. Thank you, Jonathan. Good morning, everyone. And thank you for coming on the call and listening to the panel. Uh, my name is Gary Stephen. As I said in the introduction before, I head of security and I've been here for nearly eight years. So the university security team are just one small cog in this big wheel that the University of Glasgow has got to make sure all the staff and the students are safe when they're studying here. My team are a team of 60 odd staff that are here 24 seven, 365 days a year. As it says in the first bullet point, that, that wasn't my, uh, that was Jonathan editing, by the way. I was a bit more subtle with the, about winning awards. We was a little bit further down, but we are a multi-award winning team. Uh, in the last eight years, we, we've won a plethora of awards. Uh, due to the fact that we, we, we have changed the model we, we had before to the model we've got now. And what that means for you and your children coming to the University of Glasgow is your pre preconceptions of a security officer uh, you see on some of the programmes with a pink cap and being grumpy, that's all gone. I've changed the dynamic of the team. We've got rid of flat caps and we've got no barriers to communication. We will talk and talk and talk to your students and yourselves when you come for visits and we will engage with you. Uh, the reason we're doing that is because people want to see uh, someone smiling at them so they can give them up relevant information. They don't want a grumpy old man wandering around with a flat cap on. So we changed the dynamic. The team are a lot younger now. They're a lot more diverse and they represent the uh, the footprint of the people they, they, they represent. I made a point of doing that. We're here to support your child wherever and wherever they're needed. Now, I'm going to touch on the app at the end because all roads for me lead to the right mix of technology and the right amount of boots on the ground the right amount of staff that when your students lost at two o'clock in the morning uh they've come out of the library and they're not quite sure where they are they got disorientated we will then be able to give them directions we'll be able to help them they can use the technology as well to contact us so we're here to support uh your child wherever wherever and wherever they're needed we deliver an environment where students can study, work and live safely. So that's not just the footprint of the campus, that's uh, the accommodation that we've got on Murano Street and uh, Kelvin Hall. It's when they're in town, we, all roads lead to the safe zone, that, but we are, we are we patrol the area, we have visible presence and we, we're here to reassure them, to make sure they know they're not on their own and they can always ask the question to us and, any, uh, if they feel unsafe at any stage, they just need to press the button or talk to one of my staff. We work with support services. It says that it's a bit misleading. It says security and safeguarding. I'm going to talk about safeguarding, but the safeguarding are a separate team, a fairly new team that was brought into the, by the university because we needed to have a full time team during the day. 
Now, the reason we're dovetailed in with security is because out of hours, my team are, are it. We're there to, to support anyone that's got any issues after office hours until the morning. And we make sure that these issues are signposted to the correct department, whether it be safeguarding, whether it be counselling and psychological services. And we, we make sure that that student's not left alone uh, dealing with an incident on their own or dealing with an issue on their own overnight. Next one, please, Jonathan. What are we? We're highly skilled. So part and parcel of the journey of my team, we've we've upskilled the team. We've given a lot more training. We've given gender-based violence training. We've given them mental health first aid training. We've given them all sorts of additional training that's made them different from the corporate security provision that goes out there with your contracted companies. We have defined a, a whole new training program specifically for higher education security officers, which they've all carried out and passed. They're trained uh, to use the, the security systems. And again, I'm going to talk to you about the app shortly. We work collaboratively with other departments to tailor the support we need. And like I said to you before, with the relationship we've got, not just with internal departments within the university, but with NHS, Police Scotland, other universities as well, because we've got another two universities in, in Glasgow. We work very closely with them. Uh, and we've got a big gang of, of, of higher education security chief officers that I'm part of, that we, we share lots of information and best practice with them as well. So we're always striving for continuous improvement. Now, I've talked about the Safe Zone app. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? If anyone coming to University of Glasgow, any member of staff or any student needs to download this app. Uh, we invested in this app uh, in, we, we tried to get it from 2017 and we finally got it in at 2020. This app is a free app for every single student to download, a member of staff to download. And if you press the red button in emergency, and it's whatever the student or the member of staff deems to be an emergency, they press that red button, an alarm goes in my control room, my staff stop doing what they're doing, they look at the geo map to see where the person is that's pressed the button, and the first responders are already out there in the van or on foot, they've got a handheld device where they start responding to the incident straight away, so they're not waiting for the control room manager to send them because they're already on their way, and we will go to anywhere in a reasonable distance within the campus footprint, but also if they press the red button, it can go straight to 999. So if they see an incident in town, they're in town, they're outside the university footprint and they see something happening that's a crime or they feel threatened and they need emergency services, they press the red button and it gives you the option to go to 999 and call any of the emergency services. But it also activates in the gatehouse so my staff will know where that person is and they press the red button and they've contacted emergency services. So my staff will then contact the student or member of staff and make sure they're okay and sort out ways of, of helping them, getting them back to their university or back to their accommodation. The green button it is what it says in the tin. It's a first aid button. So any first aid incident, and it doesn't have to, again, it doesn't have to be on the campus footprint. It can be out with the campus footprint. They can press that button. And again, we, we can then send someone to that incident if it's in within a reasonable distance, or we've got an instantaneous response to an incident that's occurring where we can contact 999 we can see exactly where they are on the geo map and that's global as well and i'll come to that in a second and we can then respond to that first aid incident the blue button there is the help button uh freshers after week after freshers uh, when when lectures start that button is constantly going i'm running late for a lecture can you tell me where the lecture theater is uh, where room 355 is in the main building and my staff will give them directions to the student where they are because they can actually see where they are on the map Turn left, turn right, go through the quad, up the stairs, and that's where you need to be for your lecture because they're so paranoid at the beginning of missing or being late for lectures. Not sure that continues all the way through, but it is at the beginning. So the wellbeing assistance button. The university is invested not only in the safeguarding team, but they've also invested in a, in a company called Health Assured that allow for counselling 24-7 and a, a, a batch of counsellors that are there now, one of the first uh, questions was about homesickness or, de or depression. So obviously I've said my team are there to support and signpost. So out of hours at one o'clock in the morning, if someone's feeling homesick and they contact security and say, what do I do? 
we can signpost them to the wellbeing assistance button where they can press the button and they can go through to a bank of counselors that are on call 24 seven and they speak 160 odd different languages and dialects of languages and they can go through and they can be signposted through to that person where they can speak to a professional counselor in the middle of the night to reassure them and then what we will do is do signposting to the uh, safeguarding team the following morning if it's an emergency and we need 999 services then that, that that's uh we'll get that sent back to us and we'll deal with that as well so this app as well for the people that are going to be looking to travel abroad we use this app for mass notifications uh, when people are traveling abroad if there's a earthquake for instance in turkey well i'll use turkey because it's an example we've used and we had six or seven students and staff over there, we sent a mass notification to check in to say they're okay so we could see where they were on a map and then offer any assistance in an instantaneous response to a critical incident occurring all around the world. I could speak for hours on this subject and I've been told not to. So I'm gonna stop now and I'm gonna take any questions. Well done, Gary. That was that was that was great. And actually, we've had a, a comment, not so much a question, but just a, just a comment. Security and safeguarding culture and training sounds great. So thank you for that. Um, so I mean, part of part of why we, we do that is is to reassure and make sure that we provide that support. But it might be, I guess, leaving a sort of wee niggly doubt in terms of how safe Glasgow is as a city. So could you comment on that? Yeah, I certainly can. So Glasgow is like any other big city. It has, it has its areas where there's uh, crime. However, the overview, if you look at the statistics, and there's many, many different statistics out there, you could, judging apples with apples, we'd normally judged against Manchester because it's a similar reasonable size to us and it's got a similar footprint to us. We are a lot safer when it comes to crime and, and, the, and the fear of crime, which is more important than the actual crime itself. Any, if you travel anywhere in the world for a long weekend, you have to take precautions of petty theft and everything else. Glasgow, the, the tagline to Glasgow is people make Glasgow. People, the city of Glasgow is a safe city compared to the amount of uh, people per, uh, per footfall it's got. Uh, the, the statistics of crime statistics are going down uh, uh, rapidly for violent crime. It is a very safe city. On certain days, if there's football matches on, there's certain areas you should avoid, but that is the same as if you're going to go to Milan, London, Barcelona, Rome. It's the same anywhere. You've got the same issues anywhere. But Glasgow is a safe city. And we are a little town in the west end of Glasgow, and I'm the sheriff, so I'll make sure everyone's safe. Perfect note to end on. Thank you very much.